We're gonna be utilizing the new magnetic mask in this video, going over some color theory, and I'll be going through some color correcting and grading tricks that'll get your shots looking great. I asked you guys to send me clips for me to color grade in return for 50% off my color grading masterclass, which I've actually just decided to give that out for free to winners, and my Filmic Burns overlay pack for free. I received a ton of awesome submissions, but I could only select five. So this video is the first of five in this special series where I color grade your clips on the channel. So the first winning shot is from a subscriber named Da Vinci. Congratulations, man. Since this was shot in a log profile, specifically S-Log3, let's add the custom LUT effect so we can apply our input LUT to convert this log clip to Rec. 709. We're using the S-Log3 to Rec. 709 input LUT that you can download for free on Sony's website. The overall exposure of the shot looks pretty good, so let's go to the next step in the color correction process and add a color wheels to our layers to add some contrast and saturation to get this clip looking alive again. Now we're going to place this layer before the input LUT, that way we can pull from the information in the original log clip. It is not always necessary to make a contrast adjustment before the input LUT though, and you also have to be careful when doing this. If we pull up our video scopes by pressing command 7, and we really lower the exposure of our shadows by pulling down our shadows exposure slider. Notice how our luma waveform shows that we're not going below zero here, which normally tells us that we're erasing detail in the darkest parts of our shot. But we are erasing detail in these areas. That's because our video scopes are designed for the Rec. 709 color space. And since we're adjusting before the Rec. 709 input LUT, it doesn't give us an accurate measurement. So if you do make adjustments before the input LUT, you have to be cautious that you're not erasing any detail in your footage. So I'm just gonna eye our viewport here, adjusting our shadows and mid-tones exposure sliders until we get our contrast to a good level. Next, let's do a bit of color balancing, a really important step. This shot seems to be shot at sunset, yet it's quite blue. That's no bueno. So when color balancing, you can use what are called anchors in your shot to help you get the shot's color back to a natural level. Anchors could be skin, something that should be white or gray, and you can even use something black in your shot, but let's stick to those first anchors. White should generally sit smack dab in the center of the vector scope. But if we use the crop tool and crop into his white shirt, you'll see that the color of his shirt is swinging towards blue. And if we check his skin, you'll notice that the hue or color of his skin is not on the skin tone line here. No matter your race or ethnicity, skin should always fall on this line, unless you're going for a really stylized look. So with log footage, a color balance adjustment is usually as simple as taking your global hue slider, which will adjust the color of the entire image, and we'll push away from the blue, since that's the incorrect color affecting our shot. And we'll line up the color of his skin so it's on the skin tone line. And if you've wondered how saturated skin should be, so how far up this line it should go, it should be anywhere from 10 to 40% of this line if you connect the yellow and red hue boxes. If we turn off our crop, look at this difference. Let's rename this layer. And since this shot seems to be more of a corporate type shot, I'm thinking we go for a more natural look, not a color grade that's super stylized. So let's stick with an analogous color scheme. This is the color scheme most commonly found in nature, and it involves three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. We have our light oranges, our yellows, and our greens already present in the shot, so we'll keep it natural and just help everything to pop more. So let's add another color wheels layer, and let's use the new magnetic mask tool. Let's select Da Vinci here, hold Option to deselect the areas that we don't want included in the mask, and track. So now if we bump up the brightness of our highlights, we'll only be affecting our talent here. Almost like there was a light on set, brightening him up a lot more. Now you might be saying, well skin tones lie in the midtones. so why does this adjustment to the highlights affect him? That's because your color wheels make big gradual pushes to all brightness values in your shot. So by adjusting your highlights exposure slider, you're also affecting the midtones a bit and your shadows ever so slightly. I find that making brightness adjustments like we're doing here looks most natural by making them with the highlights exposure slider. And just to add a little more contrast back on him, we'll lower the exposure of our midtones, click outside, and now if we lower our shadows and midtones exposure sliders, 
we're darkening everything outside of him. This helps to make him even more of a focus in the shot, and once again, it's almost like there was a better lighting setup on location. Colorists are like the cinematographers of post-production. We have a lot of influence on how good every shot looks. Nothing is worse than filming great looking shots and then having them look like trash in the color grading process. I spent a full year making the FCP color grading masterclass, so this doesn't happen to FCP users anymore. I'm very proud of this course. It's been getting amazing reviews from students. It's been added as an exclusive color correction and grading resource on Apple's official website. It has over 85 lessons covering everything from the fun world of color theory to precision color correction to step-by-step -step color grading walkthroughs. And recently I added additional lessons showing how to use the new magnetic mask for color correction and color grading. If you don't have a lot of footage that you can practice with, no worries because the course offers 4K clips that you can download and follow along with. Not only that, but students get my filmic love packs for free, as well as a useful Funica Pro shortcuts guide. It's a fun course, I think, that's geared towards brand new beginners all the way up to more advanced video editors. I spent an entire year making sure that it could help you transform the look of your videos, and I am positive that it can. I also think we should cool down our shadows a bit and maybe push some magenta into our highlights to balance out some of the green that I'm seeing. And I'm not super happy with the contrast on him. He's a bit too dark, I think. So with the inside selected, let's raise the exposure of our midtones so we can get a better adjustment of his skin. And we'll add that contrast back in by bringing our shadows down. Let's rename the correction so we can stay organized. And we'll move on to some secondary corrections by adding our HSL curves. We'll go to our hue versus hue curve, which lets you adjust the color of any color you want. And let's use the picker to select our greens here. I want to swing these so they're sitting a bit closer to our yellows. That way we can get even closer to an analogous color scheme. Here's what that did. Just warms the greens up and makes the shot a bit more inviting. With our hue versus sat curve, which lets you adjust the intensity of color in any color you want, let's select our oranges and make them slightly more intense. Heading down to luma versus sat, we can adjust the intensity of color in different brightness values. So basically, by lowering the left side of our curve here, we're taking out how intense the colors are in the darkest parts of our shot. This cleans up our blackest blacks and is a great way to make your shot look cleaner and more professional. We'll use our sat versus sat curve to lower the saturation of our most saturated areas and increase the saturation of our least saturated areas. Basically, balancing the intensity of color in our shot. And even though his skin didn't look super saturated when we checked the vector scope earlier, let's use the orange versus sat curve to select his skin so we can lower the saturation in the midtones without affecting the saturation of our warm sunset in the background. This curve lets you adjust the intensity of color of any color based on if that color is in a bright or dark area in your shot. Final secondary corrections, just to get this shot looking even better and to give you another example of using the magnetic mask. Let's add a Gaussian blur effect to our viewport. And what I wanna do is just select the foreground here. So him and these bushes. And deselect everything else by holding Option. And hit Analyze. But if we hit Done, he is blurred. And he's not naked or anything, so we don't want that. So let's invert the mask. And now you're probably seeing what we're doing here, just adjusting our settings to create more of a shallow depth of field effect. We want this to be subtle though. Going too heavy on this can look unnatural. And lastly, let's create more of a pop by adding a color curves layer, creating a shape mask with it, put it into position and feather it a ton by adjusting this outer circle, hit outside so everything outside of that center circle is affected, and we'll use our luma curve which adjusts brightness to lower the exposure, essentially creating a nice subtle vignette. It's color balanced, warm, inviting, and he looks great. Congratulations, Da Vinci. And if you're wanting to create more amazing looking videos, see what people are saying about the FCP Color Grading Masterclass by clicking on the link in the description and comments. And have a great rest of your day.